Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house as we gather for worship and praise today. We'll begin our worship with our opening hymn, Renew Me, O Eternal Light. Cringing 
come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds towards the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. There did we rejoice in him. Who rules by his might forever. Whose eyes keep watch on the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. Continue to send your messengers to preserve your people in true peace, that by the preaching of your word your church may be kept free from all harm and danger. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our sermon today is, it is based on all three of the readings, because the overriding theme in all three of the readings is the word peace. But the main focus for the sermon is Isaiah 66, or Old Testament reading. Rejoice with Jerusalem, and be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass. And the hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is two portions of Galatians 6. Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in the spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work, and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone, and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load, one who is taught the word, must share all good things with the one who teaches. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. But far be it for me to boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision counts for anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation, and as for all who walk by his rule, this rule, peace and mercy be upon them, and upon the, uh, the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause me trouble, for I bear on my body the marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brothers. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Open our eyes for our Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is from Luke chapter 10. 
After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you. And remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, for the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not receive you, go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, it will be more bearable on that day for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazon! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy-two returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you. But rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We profess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, Beautiful Savior. <laughs>
peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We sing songs like Beautiful Savior. We sing tranquil songs like When Peace Like a River. And the refrain, It is well with my soul. And we imagine the, the calmness the tranquility of the writer. I was talking to uh, Pastor Will this past week while he's on holidays. He talked about being up at a cottage, and, and I could picture the lake surrounded by woods and him just sitting out on the Adirondack chair with a cup of coffee in his hands. Will mentioned that he was going through his prayer list whenever I had called. And I could even picture that peacefulness of being surrounded by nature and having a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God about the people and things on his mind. It sounded like a peaceful setting, to be sure. A peaceful and tranquil setting like all of your lives are each day, everyone, right? I mean, especially those of you who are in your retirement years. Life just goes by, as the song says, like sea billows roll. It's just all carefree and trial-free and struggle and worry-free. Right? Right, Earl? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Guess you can get the sarcasm. It's clear. I know. I see it. I feel the realities along with you. I mean, I turn on the TV and, and see the people holding placards crying out for peace now. And I hear the chants of no justice, no peace from the masses on the screen. And I think this isn't good. I talk to people who are struggling with finding a doctor. And how it's a far cry from a peaceful time. How scary it is whenever hospital emergency departments are having to close for multiple days, especially if you need it. And how unsettling it is when you hear about the wait times at the hospitals. Just be checked out as you struggle with an injury or illness. Again, far from peaceful moments. Sticker shock. That used to be a phrase when it came to buying a new car. Now sticker shock is seeing the prices at the grocery store of different things. And that's when peace becomes elusive, when you know you have a certain budget, but are you going to be able to get all the groceries you need? Locally, the sudden deaths of two young men have robbed families and communities of peace for the moment. The sorrow and grief have taken over their waking and their sleeping moments. I mean, man, man just wants to go about our days wanting some stability and security, some sense of peace and some sense of hope, especially in this tumultuous world. And from our readings today, I want to tell you that whatever you're wrestling with, Whatever your less than peaceful moments, God knows. He knows your heart's desire for peace. And he also knows how overwhelming it can be for us as we try to grasp for it, as we, as we try to hold on to it. You see, God has seen his people wrestling for peace since the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden into sin. Because with their fall, sin-filled and broken, that describes our world perfectly. And our individual lives are also under that and affected by that sin-filled and broken each and every day. And you see, when we're honest with ourselves, we so easily know that we contribute to that brokenness, don't we? It could be that, that careless word that's spoken. It could be that thoughtless gesture that hurts someone's feelings. It could be those angry words that are spoken in the moment. That desire to want to walk with no one, not even God, or his people, or hearing it being told about how to live, what to think, such unpeaceful moments 
afflict us continually. Like I said, God knows our wrestlings. That's why hundreds of years before Jesus was born, the prophet Isaiah, he said, Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her. Enjoy all you who mourn over her. For thus says the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river. Now, that reference to Jerusalem, it isn't just the city, the location. Jerusalem's always referred to as the church, God's people, the believers who are holding on to God. But the problem was is that at this time of Isaiah, it was far from peaceful, far from holding on to God. You see, the people in Isaiah's day, they saw God's people, they saw the church, they saw Jerusalem, they saw it falling into hypocrisy and unbelief and idolatry, even among the people of God. And the result is that they saw the, the things you hear about throughout the Old Testament. They saw the Assyrians come in and destroy and capture everything, scatter the people and slave some. Then they saw the Babylonians come in and they did the same thing. The sin of God's people had brought about their struggles, had brought about their difficulties, and they bore the consequences. And you see, it was in the midst of this struggle, it was in the midst of mourning God that he had sent the prophet Isaiah to bring them hope. Hope in the midst of their struggles, peace in the midst of their struggles. He promised to bring the needed peace. He called it like a river. And you know how a river is. Nothing stops it. When it wants to go in a certain direction, it will move every dirt, every mountain, every hill to get where it's got to go. And that's exactly what God says. He promises to bring that needed peace that will bore through everything. The peace that they longed for, it would flow from Him offering the life-giving nutrients that they would need to flourish. That God's people would be seen through their time. Isaiah told them, You shall nurse, you shall be carried upon the hip and bounced upon the knee. In other words, you will be cared for. I see Rick back there with Lori, and I saw how Kathy just a few minutes ago fed her just to make sure that peace reigns back in that corner of the church, right? And as he's sitting there with Ori Bouncing, Ken, keeping that peace going. That's exactly what God is saying. That he is going to care for us. God would see them through. He would care for them and guide them with his word and the prophets. He would strengthen them to follow and place their trust in him. To look to him for their only source of nourishing strength and confidence. And you see, it's in that hope that they would be invited to cling to him. Cling to his words of promise, especially his words of promise of a Savior who would come, who would rescue them and open the kingdom of heaven to believers. You know, today, that same message, it comes to each one of us. To have during our own struggles and our strained ways a people who still live in a sin-filled and broken world. Our sins in thought and word and deed each and every day. All the ways we stray away from God and His work. How we so easily, how we just get sucked into the gossip around us. The, the judgmental looks that we can give others. The doubting and the mistrust of one another. And even God, how we so often can strive to try and go it alone, figuring that we are pretty smart, we're pretty independent, we're pretty educated, surely we can make it and survive on our own. But that's when we find ourselves far from peace, because what happens is we find ourselves floundering when the less than peaceful time strikes. And then what? Well, Isaiah... He tells us that like newborn babes in need of caring, he says God is here. And with his presence, we receive from God the comfort needed, as from a mother's milk. 
Not just in the future when Jesus promised it'll come again, but, but most important is that it's even now. We don't have to wait for it. You see, Jesus, he feeds us even now with refreshing food. His very presence in our lives each and every day. He comforts us with a way of life, with his plan of life, even when we don't fully understand what's really going on around us. Even whenever nations are in turmoil, even when so many seemingly to be enemies of God, even when tragedy strikes so suddenly. Like a crying baby is fed, and like a restless child is bounced on a mother's knee, God, need, God is comforting each one of us. Because we are children of God. And he says, as one whom his mother comforts, so will I comfort you. That's his promise. In our gospel lesson for today, that peace couldn't stay local. In that gospel reading, we hear about 72 men being given that message. A message of hope and assurance that would bring peace in the people's lives. As that message was shared, the Holy Spirit worked through it, and it did bring true comfort and strength and a peace that passes all understanding. Now, their message, it simply pointed to Jesus as the Son of God and it invited them to look to Jesus. And as they looked, they were invited to see that the kingdom of God was at hand. And then they were invited to repent and believe. For you and me, we are given that same call, but our message is extended a little more because we know the rest of the story. You see, as children of the Heavenly Father, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as fellow citizens of heaven who desire more to join us, you and I are given the message to invite and call out people to share that hope, that peace that only God can give. We share it by first starting out and just simply saying, I care about you. And I want you to know why I have confidence in life because at the cross is where I see God's love. Where I see it lived out for me, where I see it lived out for you. As Christ lived that perfect life in our place, as he suffered and died for all of our sins out of obedience to the Father and especially out of love, for you and for me. We share that Jesus, he went to the cross of Calvary and he suffered judgment so that God might declare to us that we're no longer his enemies. Enemies who, yes, we sin, but we are forgiven. Enemies who should be destroyed, but we are forgiven. For Jesus to say, we are his forgiven and beloved children and because of that, the kingdom of heaven is ours. You see, you and I are called to share this vital and comforting news because everyone, everyone, including each one of us, needs to hear the fact that as people sit in darkness, the darkness of seeking peace, feeling powerless, that it is not our lot in life to stay in that darkness, to not know that peace. You see, Jesus, he doesn't say, Fear and dread to this house, for judgment will come upon you. As he said to the disciples after his resurrection, he says to each one of us, and he tells us to share, peace be with you. Here is my peace for you. Peace for new life, peace for hope, and especially peace to see you through all things. You know probably better than me. You know the reality that God doesn't promise to take away all of life's difficulties. We see it each and every day. And sometimes it's close to home and sometimes it's far away. But the fact is, as life's difficulties come, you know this all too well. But what God does promise is that He sees us through all things. He promises to be that peace like a river that's going to keep carrying us through those difficulties. 
He promises to forgive all sins when we seek His forgiveness through confession. He promises to work through our baptisms where we're marked as a child of God. He promises to work through Holy Communion as the Spirit works bringing those gifts of Christ, forgiveness and strength and life now and the assurance of eternal life. And He promises to work, to work through His Word each and every day to strengthen us and see us through this life, to see us through into eternity with Him in His time. So until that day, you and I, like Kathy was just doing a few minutes ago with Lori, we actually get to hold out the bottle as well. We get to hold out the milk. We get to console with a pat on the back, with a hug. We get to hold out the hip and bend the knee so that people can find peace in Jesus because we are his representatives in the world. We are the ones bearing that peace that our world most definitely needs. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes on understanding, keep our hearts and our minds clinging to Christ Jesus for that peace and then sharing it with the world. Amen. At this time, uh, the offering will be brought forward, and as it's brought forward, we'll sing our offertory prayer. Here, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth, 
doing all that we can to proclaim your word in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing, Lord, we remember also those who are sick, homebound, hospitalized, and for other reasons unable to join with us in person. Send your spirit to fill their hearts and homes with your perfect peace. Be especially with Brian as he continues to wrestle with illness. Be with all the family and friends, the students, the teachers, the communities that have been affected by the passing of Brody, the sudden passing. Lord, give comfort and peace to all involved, and, and as you know is best also. Lord, we ask for strength and comfort and peace for the driver that was also involved in the accident. Lord, we pray that, that all would be restored and comforted by your mighty and healing hand and ever praise you for your work in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, today we take a moment to pray for our nation as we have just celebrated Canada Day. Continue to bless our country as you have done so abundantly. Raise up godly men and women who will serve wisely among us. May they look to you for true wisdom and work for the common good so we would know lasting peace. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we rejoice with those celebrating birthdays, baptismal birthdays, and anniversaries this week. We thank you for the blessings of the past and entrust them to your future care. Lord, in your mercy, in your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We'll join in singing our closing hymn, Before You, Lord, We Bow.
please be seated just for a second. Please make note of the announcements in the bulletin. Please also remember next week we will not be having church here at 11. Uh, next week is Maria's 10th, uh, 10th, 50th anniversary. And so we uh, are going as a congregation. We're inviting everyone to come up for that service. Um, we are having as well a catered meal afterwards uh, with Pauline, uh, Pauline preparing the, the meal. And um, we want to encourage everybody to be there right now for the meal. There's 102, I think it is. And so it is going to be a large crowd. Pastor Bars from, is coming. As long as he gets his passport cleared in time, he's coming uh, with his two daughters from Kansas. Uh, he told me this week. And um, Pastor Wayne's on his way uh, from, from uh, the Ottawa area. And he'll be here for the week. And um, yeah, Pastor... Um, Pastor Gublitz, who's our, our district president, our regional pastor, he's going to be uh, preaching for that service, and a number of our circuit pastors are going to be here as well. So that's next Sunday at 2.30, 2.30, uh, you guys are right? Um, is it right? Yeah. Okay, good. 2.30, uh, so again, uh, plan to come for that. Even if you're not going to stay for the meal, we'd love to have you for the service for that. Um, if you haven't let me know about the meal and you are coming good, just give me a heads up at, at the end of church so I, can, I have a little book in my pocket that I've been kind of keeping track of everybody because I want to make sure Pauline has enough prepared. Uh, so let me know about that as well. Um, concerning the tragedy with uh, Brody, it, it was definitely a sudden and, and tragic death. Um, the visitation is going to be Tuesday, 2 to 4, 7 to 9 at... Uh, Haskett's in Exeter. The funeral will be here at 2 o'clock on the Wednesday. Uh, so just want to make you aware of that and keep all the family and that in, in your prayers. And, and the students, it's affected students at two different schools and teachers and so forth. So keep them all in your prayers in these days ahead, as well as, of course, the family in that too. So what else uh, needs to be made mention of? Hannah. We have our VBS meeting this Thursday at 7 p.m. and we're still looking for volunteers as well. So even if you just want to come out to our meeting and see what other help we need for VBS and just kind of look and see if you are available. If you can only come one day of the VBS week or if you can come all week, we can really use your help. There you go. Another thing that they're going to bring it up Thursday as well at the meeting that I'm just giving you guys a heads up. Um, Freedsburg this year, uh, Freedsburg weekend, there's going to be a parade on the Saturday. Typically, we have put in a float in the past, some sort of float. Um, we haven't really discussed it, and it's getting closer. I know they're going to talk about it Thursday, whether we have a theme with our BBS, because it is the end of our week, or if we want to have something concerning the church. Um, but I can't organize that. I'm, I'm working on something else right now. So if anybody's interested in organizing a float or helping VBS to put a float together or something like that, talk to Hannah about that as well. We, In the past, we've always put in a float, uh, so I'd like to do it again. But again, it's only if we have enough hands to do something. And unfortunately, it's kind of what we have. 29 or 28 days or whatever it is, so we do have some time, but, uh, and I'm sure we can secure a wagon, right, Peter? Uh, so I think we can secure a wagon, so it's just if we're going to put anything on it. So think about that, let Hannah know, let me know. If you can get it out, yes, yeah, yes, I guess I need to get some things done to get it out. Okay, uh, so we'll work on that. Anything else need to be made mention of? Joanne. We've got choir after church today for, um, for singing for next week. Okay. Anything else? Before we leave, again, it is Canada Day weekend, uh, so we'll rise and we'll sing out Canada.
Lord. Thanks be to God.